Are you tired of being killed for your spade? Do you routinely vote no to PvP updates? Do you shake so hard in any PvP situation on RuneScape that you might just pee your pants? If you answered yes to any of those questions, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to competitively PK on RuneScape. This episode is brought to you by Opera GX, the best online web browser for gamers. It's packed with tools and taskbars that will keep all your socials in one place, and its sidebar will link all your socials in the same place so you can check them all no matter what you're browsing at the time. The accessibility to have Twitter and Discord while you're watching YouTube videos is pretty nice for me, and it also allows you to link your Instagram, your Facebook Messenger, and even your TikTok if you have one of those. It allows you to stream music directly through the browser through any platform you might have, whether that's Spotify or Apple Music or YouTube Music. You can customize your browser colors and themes however you like, and if this all isn't enough, Opera GX even keeps you up to date with its GX Corner, which is a panel that lets you know about all new free content and new releases and some of the best deals in gaming right now. And when you switch over from whatever browser you can use, go to the full browser settings, go to synchronization, and you can import all your cookies, all your settings from whatever other browser you use, as well as any extensions or anything you have off the Google Chrome extension store. Opera GX is also available on your mobile device. GX Mobile is great to have along with a desktop version because you can connect the two using the MyFlow feature, which allows you to send and share everything between your mobile and desktop browser. Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Use my link on screen or the link in the description to download Opera GX today. Competitively, what the fuck are you talking about, Didabitter? Well, over the past couple years, RuneScape has started hosting a couple of competitive tournaments. And while there are a lot of different styles of PKing throughout the years on RuneScape, one has remained dominant in any sort of competitive settings where there's money up for grabs, and it is tribriding, which is PKing with all three attack styles and all three overhead defensive prayers. You've probably watched some tribriding before and been completely overwhelmed by it, so let's simplify it down for you. It is just a high IQ game of rock, paper, scissors. You have three attack styles to attack with and three prayers to defend with. The name of the game is to simply make more correct decisions than your opponent. Attack them while they're in their bad gear on their wrong prayer, while you're in your good gear and your right prayer, and you will simply win the fight. I'm going to start in LMS like my last PKing guide, but after this I'm going to take you into the wilderness in some somewhat reasonable setups so we can get some experience there. Before we even get into a game of LMS, you want to make sure you set yourself up properly, set yourself up for success. A lot of your PK ability will depend on, will depend on your muscle memory habits you develop over time as you learn how to PK, which is why you want to start learning good habits right from the beginning. Before you even enter a game of LMS, come to the chest and check your setup. You'll notice I have all my switches at the bottom of my inventory rather than the top. This is scientifically better for Triber PKing. I'm not trolling you. It is scientifically better. It's closer to all three of your protection prayers as well as closer to all three of your offensive prayers than if you're switching at the top. And when you go to your spell book, it is closer to your ice barrage as well. The least amount of mouse movement you have to do while switching will make you both faster and accurate. And even if you've been top switching for years, I would recommend start trying to build some new habits by having your switches at the bottom because it will be better in the long run as you get better. So the aim of the game is to make more correct decisions than your opponent and over time you will simply win the fight. Obviously that is easier said than done but I would like to instill some good habits in you guys so that over time as you get better you will simply make better and more correct decisions. The way damage in this game is calculated is simple. Let's take an ice barrage which has the base max hit of 30. When I cast a barrage against someone it rolls my magic accuracy so all of my magic offensive gear versus their magic defense, whatever gear they're wearing. And it dictates whether I'm gonna splash the freeze or I'm gonna catch the freeze. If I catch the freeze, it's gonna be a hit from zero to 30. If I splash, it's obviously a 52 XP drop and I don't get any hit, I don't get any freeze. The hit from zero to 30, if rolled, is completely random. The hit being one damage, five damage, 25 damage. It is completely, da uh, completely random. It is just from a zero to 30 random roll. If they are protected from magic, they will negate 40% of the damage. So I can only hit 60% of my max hit through prayer. So if someone is praying mage and I cast an ice barrage on them, which has a base max hit of 30, I'll only be able to hit an 18. The same obviously goes for melee and range. If I have a max hit on a whip of 45 and the guy is praying melee, I can only hit a 27. If my range bolt maxes a 40 and the guy is praying range, I can only max a 24. So obviously the aim of the game is to hit your opponent off prayer so you can use capitalize and hit as many max hits as possible. So this isn't exactly rocket science, but for those of you who are completely new to PKing, this is what sitting in my tank gear looks like. I'm going to be referring to my tank gear a lot during this video, sitting in your tank, and this is exactly what it means. I'm wearing my Aram staff for the optimal mage defense. I'm wearing my black DI body and my rune plate legs, which is the best defensive gear I have, as opposed to the mystics. Obviously, you can see my defense bonus goes to pretty much nothing when I put that on. 
And obviously I'm wearing the spirit shield. If you have that defender instead of the spirit shield, your defensive bonuses go even lower. So this is the full tank gear based off your LMS setup when you start in. This is your tank setup and is gonna be very important for the next part. The prayers thing is kind of a no-brainer, but I wanna stress to you guys the importance of taking hits in your tank. You wanna maximize the chance of your opponent hitting zero on you, which is why I like looking at RuneScape PvP as a turn-based game, even though it's not. When, you're, when it's your opponent's turn or tick to attack you, I want you to try and be in full tank gear every time while taking the hit. As you guys know, this will increase your chance of them rolling a zero on you instead of an actual number between 1 to 45. The more defensively smart you are, the less damage you take, which will allow you to inflict more damage and build momentum and a lead during a fight. You can't always predict the right prayers in a fight, but you can always make sure that you are in your tank gear, as the chances of you getting hit at zero in tank are much higher than getting hit at a zero when you're in your full robes. If you can hit your opponent off tank as much as possible, while they hit you in your tank as much as possible, the chances of you winning the fight increase heavily. So up until this fight, I'm already 112 HP ahead of my opponent, and I hit him off his tank gear seven different times, and he hasn't hit me off my tank gear a single time. This is the habits I'm talking about exactly, which will lead to having you uh, an HP advantage into the fight. If you hit him off tank more times than they hit you off tank, you're simply just gonna have the advantage. I hit him off his tank seven different times while he didn't hit me off my tank once. Now I'm going to show you guys the prayers during the fight as well, alongside the tank hits. As you guys can see, I've already hit him off prayer four times here. He hasn't hit me off prayer a single time. Here he gets his first ball off prayer and hits me a 30 for it, and follows it up with another ball here while I'm running away, which honestly I should have got my prayer range on a tick earlier, but it is what it is. You know, you can't get every single prayer correct like I said. But as you guys can see, I'm clearly building momentum as I'm hitting him off tank, off prayer, Seven hits off his prayer versus two hits to my prayer, and I'm just building a very big HP advantage. Here you can see I'm already up 150 damage, and I promise you guys, if you guys just get into these two habits and try and focus on these things first, slow down the fight, make sure you're hit, getting hit in your tank, and make sure you're hitting them off tank, and you will get HP boosts and HP advantage throughout the fight. Now there is actually a way you can track all these statistics like hits off prayer, hits on prayer, whether you're in your tank gear or not. I want you guys to go to the plugin hub right now, search in PvP. I already have it installed obviously, but you guys might not have it installed. The PvP performance tracker, please install it right now. Come here and click show fight history panel, show fight overlay, and show damage dealt in the overlay. This will actually let you see how much HP you are up or down in a fight as it's happening as you guys have seen in my clips. And once it is over, you can come to this fight history tab right here and take a look at the statistics. So there's a lot of different stats to go over in the PvP tracker, but I don't want you guys getting too obsessed over the RNG because it can really take out the fun of PKing for you. And if you're just starting, I don't want to do that just yet. All I want to show you now is the prayer count as that's the tangible progress you can definitely see over time. As you guys can see, I hit this guy 25 times. He hit me 26 times. 15 out of those 25 hits, I hit him off prayer. So that's 60% of the time I hit him off prayer. He hit me only 11 times off prayer out of the 26 hits he had, so he only had a 42% percentage. Now you guys can't focus on this completely as you guys need to make sure you're in your tank and they're not in their tank, but as you guys can see, if you just keep getting that number higher than their number, then over time you should be doing better, and it's just something you can see and record your progress over time. So we've gone over your setup, good habits, how to know if you're making progress, and some examples of those habits in actual fights. It's time to show you how to actually gain HP advantages and start outsmarting your opponent so you can actually hit them off prayer, off tank, win some fights, and get some loot. Now the best way to gain an HP advantage over your opponent is through fakies. It's by conditioning your opponent to think you're going to do something you're not and becoming unpredictable. Now as someone who has PK'd for years, there's thousands of different ways you can make your opponent think something, and this is where the high IQ part of the high IQ rock, paper, scissors game comes in. Now I'm going to teach you some basic fakies to make your opponent do the wrong thing, and as you can get better, you can figure out your own style of PKing. The most obvious fakie, but somehow the one that works every time, is a fakie through the spec weapon. People are terrified of dying and of getting specced out. Run at anyone with a DDS or an AGS or whatever your spec weapon is, and the moment before it's about to attack them, you can sw quickly switch back to your crossbow and bolt them. If they fall for the fakie because they think you're going to spec them out, they'll pray melee and you'll get a bolt off of prayer. Now there are some people who come down with the prey melee disease hard and this fakie will work on them 10 times over and they might not even take prey melee off unless you're frozen. These are the easiest people to beat. You can do the same fakie 10 times over and if they eventually change their prayers for some reason, then you have all those specs and all that melee to use and they won't be expecting it. 
More common fakies are through gear fakes. If you're in your range gear with your crossbow out, your opponent is going to pray range. But if you quickly switch to all your maze switches, then instantly go back to your range switches a tick later, there's a chance that they've ch changed to pray mage as they think that's what you're going to do, just in time for you to bolt them off prayer, like so. Now obviously this works the other way around too. If you're in your mage gear, you can quickly switch to your range gear right before you're supposed to barrage and they'll change to pray range. And you can quickly switch back to your mage gear, hit the F keys and hit a barrage. Now this is a little harder because you have to be pretty quick with it, but as you get better over time, you'll be able to do it no problem. I'm in a max meta LMS game. I'm just going to over commentate pretty much everything and hopefully you guys can pick up some things from it. Obviously start off in your tank. You always want to be starting in your tank. I'm just going to spam click this guy. Hopefully we get that fight. I am going to start off with a spec. I do do that in LMS a lot. People sometimes don't expect you to just run in with a DDS. And before you know it, you have a very big HP advantage. I say that, I poke him there. So he's only bolted me on prayer so far on tank. So, so far I am doing amazing in this fight. Go for a freeze there. He's bolted me again on prayer on tank. This guy's got a big case of the prey melee disease. So we'll hit a couple fakies on the DDS with him. Not changing it at all. Seems like he's just here to try and collect some points. And these are the, oh, okay. No, he's, I'm wrong. He's changing his prayers. So that's when you go in with the DDS. Here is when you want to eat. I should, you guys should always be pretty much over 70 HP. I'm going to be taking a lot of risk because I just give less of a fuck, to be honest. And I like playing RuneScape in a somewhat risky way. But when you're learning how to PK, you're not really going to progress if you just start dying every fight. So I would definitely recommend keeping your HP up. Two DDS specs off prayer on that guy. Both could have killed him. It's just unfortunate. That's just the way the game is. Hopefully this bot kills him. Hello, B grime. And that is one guy down already. Let's go get this upgrade and let's get into another fight. Okay, so we got a Ballista and a Darox Helm. I'm actually not going to keep any of these switches. You guys can use whatever switches you want. Learn how to PK however you want. But I'm trying to make the most standardized sort of guide right here. And for the majority of you, I assume you're going to want to keep things normal as you're just starting with a crossbow and everything. So we got another fight here versus Mr. Turtle. We start off with a ball on robes. Very nice. We catch the freeze. So we're both frozen here. I can get another ball on robes. Unfortunately, hit a zero. Another ball on robes. Even if they're playing range, it is still better to bolt someone on robes. I'll tell you guys that much. We can go for the freeze now again. So far, I don't think he's hit me off prayer. I just bolted him on robes off prayer again. I'm going to be unfrozen, so we dump a spec. How does he react? Does he pray melee? He does. Now, because he prays melee there, he might change his prayers here to die. Dead? See, that was perfect. He changed his prayer for one tick. I went in for the spec. I just hit a zero zero. Now, this guy's on the case of the prey melee disease. He's panicking a little bit. Manages to catch a freeze there. That's two bolts in a row on his mystics. Three bolts in a row on his mystics. Four, maybe? Four there just as he's switching, so I'll go for a freeze here. Nice. Another bolt on his mystics. See, those can all be big hits even through the prayer. Another bolt on his mystics. We're just getting unlucky. But we have a spec now. We're unfrozen. Zero. Z oh my god, bro. This guy should fucking enter the lottery. Nice bolt there on the robes. Spec. And he should be dead. Oh! I, I did a preemptive good fight. Good fight. So that guy could not put on his tank to save his life. And, well, his life got decimated. We'll take the Fury and we'll get another upgrade real quick. Alright, we finally found another fight, bro. I've been running around for ages. Oh, it's that big guy I'm from earlier. So I think I can get a cheeky bolt off here on his ropes. Not piece switched to his tank in time. And holy fuck did I pay the price. I just got bolted to the 36. Cut the freeze there. He's already praying melee. So this guy's going to be a heavy prey melee from what I can tell. Praise melee there, but he does catch the freeze, so he's not going to pray melee for a while. This guy's good, so we got to focus up. Make sure every hit we take is in our tank if possible. Nice. Doing so already. He's going to be unfrozen before me, so I need to be careful of that DDS. Bolt him in the robes there. He might actually die to that. Oh, he's coming in for the spec. He's going to die. Oh, I almost just poke KO'd him. I was praying melee. He was not, but I cannot get the spec off. I'm going to blame the 250 ping for that one. I don't make mistakes. Come on now. So this guy just ate to full, which is very smart, because if he catches this freeze, I'm in a bad position. Because he can get all these hits now, and I'm going to have to eat up. So I just triple eight there, drank the last dose of my brew, and I'm ready to go back to the fight now. He's up two damage, as you can see, currently. Bolts didn't hit me anything. Two bolts didn't hit me anything. Three bolts didn't hit me anything. It's not going good. We'll go for the DDS, trade a spec. I should be able to get the freeze right here. Nice. And he needs the freeze now. Like I said, this guy's going to be heavy on the prey melee, but he is catching every freeze, so there's not a lot of opportunity to go for melee fakies. We can go for uh, range fakies, so we'll switch into our range gear right there, go for the barrage. He did not fall for it. Bolt him off prayer there. We're just getting super unlucky, honestly, but here's a nice bolt off robes, or on robes, I should say. Both unfrozen again. Oh, he pulled out the Debo. Smart man. 
1030 DDS. You can't really predict a Debo, I'm going to be completely honest. Respect to that guy. We're up by 6, so this is a very, very close fight. Up by 15, down by 3. You just got to make sure you're trying to maximize all your potential. Take every hit in your tank. Try and get every hit on prayer. There, he just hit me a 36 off prayer, which is not good at all. Not good at all. He's going to go for another freeze here because it seems to be working. I need to eat there. He's going to come in for a spec after this crossbow, most likely, which is why I need to run away. Yep, there's the Debo. So because I've run away, I can run back in with the DDS. Come on. A 0-4. I'm getting so unlucky, bro. This guy is absolutely ridiculously lucky. He knows it, too. And that's just the way of the game. You can't get too frustrated. Eat the food. I'm completely out of food here. I'm down 46 health. So how am I going to come back from this? If he's going to mage me, I want to spam click the bolts. Either way, he whipped me in his full robes, which is very stupid. He should have been in tank for that. Caught the freeze. Now can we get a comeback? A zero with the rapier. What's he going to hit me with? The crossbow. DDS on robes. Zero. So like I said, you can't get too frustrated. Sometimes the game won't reward you even if you are doing the right things. And you might start thinking, oh, I suck. I'm not making any progress. This guy's better than me, etc., etc." Which is why you can check the tracker after to make sure you're actually pro making progress. Look at the numbers and see what you need to improve on. So here with the PvP tracker, I can tell right away that I did better than this guy. I hit him a total of 46 times while he only hit me 37 times. If you have nine more hits in a fight, the more hits you get in a fight obviously will allow you to do more damage on average because you have nine more rolls at a hit. I hit him off prayer 24 times where he only hit me off prayer 18 times. Now the hit difference, the prayer difference, as well as what gear you're in for each hit, like being in your tank or your robes, dictates what the deserved damage should be. And as you can see in that final fight, I should have been up 134 damage on average. Unfortunately, the game is still RNG and sometimes you will lose fights that you shouldn't have and you just have to be okay with that as long as you can take some things and learn from it. When you actually go PK in the wilderness, your inventory changes drastically from an LMS setup to a wilderness setup. And you need to bring a lot of brews in order to make sure you last a long time in the fight and it changes how you play completely. So for example, I'm in combat with this Hellhound. If I eat an Anglerfish, it heals me 22 HP. Everyone knows that and it doesn't reduce any of my stats, but it does put me on a delay until I can next attack. See, if I do it again, there is a while until I can hit next. However, if let's say I'm casting barrages and I want to drink a brew, I can go for the blitz the next tick and there's absolutely no delay. I can go for a blitz, I can drink a restore, no delay, and go in for the barrage. So the reason people bring brews is one for the amount of damage it brings. A brew, a full brew will heal you 64 HP as opposed to an angler's 22 HP, but also it just allows you to keep fighting while healing at the same time. Here I can bolt and brew at the same time and it will kill it, I'm still brewing, I can still attack another one, there's absolutely no delay at all. The issue is with brewing down, so when your stats are brewed down, you need to bring restores in order to combat this. Now for every one dose of restore, you can use three doses of brews. Here, see, I can hit a barrage right now, I drink a brew, I can no longer hit the barrage, I drink another dose of brew, I can't hit the blitz anymore, I can hit a burst if I want to. One more dose, and my mage level is all the way down to 70. Now I can't hit a barrage. One restore, I can hit the barrage perfectly. So when you're in a natural fight and you're practicing your eating, you've got to be smart about how you do things. If you don't really have a lot of momentum, you're both frozen away from each other, you definitely want to be using your brews to make sure you're healing yourself during the fight. But then once you get some momentum, restore up, you know, catch a freeze, you can start using your potions because you have to be smart how you use your potions as well. And you really only want to use your pots when you have momentum and you're going to be setting up an attempt to go for the kill. If you're brewing down a bunch and using your potions in between, then it is just not good at all. So you want to make sure you're generally around full HP when you pot up. So this is about the cheapest setup I'd use if I was actually going to go into the wilderness. Now, I would actually never use a setup like this. I enjoy using a lot bigger risk, a lot better gear. And I think it is a better way for you to learn how to PK. You guys spend all this time collecting all this money. You know, use it, risk it, have fun. The first thing I will tell you guys is you are going to die. Whatever you go into the wilderness with, whatever you're risking, assume you've already lost it. In fact, assume you've already lost it 10 times over. If you've just learned how to PK, you're going to die to people better than you. And that is honestly one of the ways you're going to get better at PKing, simply by fighting better people than you. This is the gear setup that, you know, you could really start with. It's about 10 mil risk. And if you really want to start low, honestly, you could start lower than this, right? You can use an ancient staff, you can use a rune crossbow and have your plus one as an AGS and your risk will be around one to two mil. But for the time for the type of pk you're going to be doing end of 2022 end of 2023 the type of people you're going to be fighting you're going to want some better gear now i'm going to show you exactly what i mean i'm going to hop into world 303 right now which is where you can go to pretty much instantly get fights in the revenant caves and i'm going to show you the kind of people who are going to attack me so i just teleported into 303 haven't pk'd at all today 303 rev caves i'm going to run in 
And there are already two Maxes fighting here. Ox, two Pills, one Cosby, TMZ. Alright, we found a diff we found another guy in like somewhat welfare gear, so. Should be uh Oh my god, is he dead already? Oh! Okay, well, sorry, I was trying to I was trying to be a little bit slow paced with that and show you guys how I can't sound a fight in the wilderness, but I saw an opportunity to go for the spec right there and go for the kill, so I went for it. Honestly, that's that's the best lesson I can give you guys. If you guys see an opportunity to go for the kill, just go for it. Like this guy just tried AGS mauling me. Obviously, I predicted it, so uh he did not get it off prayer. But if there's a good opportunity to go for it, you absolutely can. So the name of the game in these fights is to set up a spec opportunity. Like I just had. I just double G mauled into the AGS whack off prayer. I can't remember if he was on robes, but it was on about KOable HP. In this gear, I can max a 73 with the AGS, I want to say. And maybe like a 50 something with the whack. Um, the G mall can max around a 40 with the special attack, but you know, you can't really rely on a G mall 40. I have no idea what that guy just did with his spec. <laughs> He's blaming the world, but I'm literally on 270 ping, so, and I managed to get it off. That's another thing. Ping is not actually as big a factor as you guys may think. I live in New Zealand. I fight and compete in servers all over the world. And as long as you're getting your tank on, you're doing the right things, you have the right habits, you'll still put up a pretty decent fight. You guys can see I'm up 113 damage in a fight with this guy right now. There's that 51 whack I'm talking about. He's most likely going to pray melee. He doesn't. He's brewing down, so I'm going to go for the freezes. Hit a zero. Go for a bolt on the robes. Nice. So here I'm on 40% spec. I'm going to start potting up. I just used my last dose of range uh, pot because I'm about to be on 50% spec again, which means I can try and set up a KO opportunity. The only way I really think I'm going to kill this guy is with the AGS spec that does enough damage. Honestly, uh, actually, no, he's on 74 right there. 39 bolt. Catch the freeze here. See, we can definitely set something up. If I was unfrozen there, I would have specced him right there and probably killed him. Um, but unfortunately, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's another thing you want to keep an eye on is your freeze timer. I'm frozen for another six seconds. So I can get a couple more hits off here until I'm unfrozen. Big bolt there. Come on, go for the freeze. He might pray melee here. I need to catch this freeze. I need to catch this freeze. There we go. He's going to pray melee there so we don't go for it. Fake the bolts. Another big bolt. Nice. So we're going to go in for the AGS right here and hopefully it kills him. He's praying melee. It is what it is. He changes prayers. He's trying to get the freeze to escape. Come on, catch. Dude! What a shit game! Okay, so this guy is in some very weird setup. No idea what's going on there. Uh, but I guess it's something we can sort of use. He's into carols, arms, whatever. So what I wanted to show you guys is how to escape, but also how I kind of go around setting up a KO. Um, obviously, he's unfrozen here. My me means to get a kill is pretty much an AGS mall on full HP on someone like this. Uh, there is his AGS. Eat that. Just hit the double eat right there. We've got some more in the background saying chance because they don't know how to PK. That's fine. They can use this guide. So we got a little bit of momentum there, so that's why I potted up. But it's not really going our way. There's his AGS. G Mola, dead. Oh my god! I could've just killed this guy for everything! Oh my god, bro, what a fucking PK and guy that would've made. Oh my days, bro. Oh my days. So yeah, you need to wait for the perfect opportunity, especially when you're in welfare, fighting some guy in max. You need to wait for the perfect opportunity to go for the spec. I recommend bringing both a Gmall and a DGS. It's going to be hard to figure out how to use both off at the start, but all you need to know is that if you hit the Gmall, hit the spec attack, and hit your opponent, I will go instantly. So you can go from an AGS whack into an instant double maul. You can go from a uh, ball into an instant maul like I just did there, which is how I almost got the kill into the whack afterwards. And actually, I'm going to show you guys how to escape. You guys can obviously run down to level 30 and uh, use your glory. But on the off chance you're fighting someone who gets TB'd or you don't have enough, you know, enough food to make it to level 30, all you have to do is catch a fresh freeze. So there, I caught a fresh freeze on him, go around a corner, and he can't hit me anymore. And I can just log out. That is all you have to do. I'm risking 10 mil. He's risking 1,000. The odds are forever in his favor, but I'm out of the game. Now, if you have unlimited money and you actually want to start fighting the best of the best and you want to start trying to kill some of the people you see die in my videos, this is the gear setup I'd recommend you to start with. 
I would use this, but a couple different things. I'd use a light bear instead of the suffering. I'd bring a dragon fire ward, and I'd bring an occult necklace for extra barrage uh, DPS. And I'd also bring a volatile nightmare staff. Now, that is just way too much to get into using a volatile, using the occult five way switches, this or that. But honestly, if you have unlimited money and you want a max setup to start with, I'd recommend this with the mage's book, four way switches into the DFS for the tank. You bring four anglerfish and nine brews, so you can never really get comboed out. You always have a double E if you need it. Make sure you don't use your four anglerfish right at the start of the fight. I'm just going to go get in a fight right now and show you guys how the setup works and how you can sort of go for it. The ways you're going to get a kill is obviously with an AGS spec, a G mall spec, an AGS whack into a double mall. But obviously, as you get better, there are other ways you can go for kills. I'd go for a kill by go by chucking a barrage into an insta G mall. I go a ball into an insta G mall into the whack. There's a bunch of different things you can do. Right now, I've only got three raggers around me, so let's try and find an actual fight. Okay, so here's the same max we almost killed earlier. So now I'm in max myself, so we can catch a freeze. Oh my god, this guy just went for an G mall AGS right off the bat. Honestly, I respect it, bro. I was 78 HP. If I didn't get the freeze, he could have gone for it. So here you can see I've got off to the bad start. So I'm going to use three of these brews, and I'm going to restore right away. I can go for the barrage again. I'm unfrozen now, so maybe if I want, I can DD under him. Like that. Use two brew doses, so I'm going to restore again. He's dead. You're dead. No way! He ran away at the perfect time. I thought I was about to double maul him for everything. Damn, bro. This guy's real quick with the running away. Oh, bro. I should have just killed this guy for max on, on PK guide. That would have been sick. We can still try, but you guys see... I don't know, maybe go back, slow it down, see what sort of caused me to try and go in for the specs. But it's fairly obvious. You get enough nice hits, you're in the right distance, you're potted up, you've got some momentum. Here, if I don't catch this freeze, and he does, I'm going to have to eat first, because I'm 63 HP. Yep, I'm going to have to eat. I'm potted up, I was trying to save my pots. But sometimes, you know, you're just, you're just doing worse. Here, he bolted me at 39, so I'm going to double eat there. Don't want to die to any of that. So here's another fight in this max setup, and I'm just going to try and set up a kill for you guys. He's in welfare, so it should honestly be a little bit easier, hopefully. Um, go for a bolt there. Nice. This guy is pretty much in the welfare setup just to try to AGS maul my head off, and then he's going to run. So it's not really a whole lot of fun when you're in max fighting someone in welfare. But the same way, it's also not fun fighting someone in max when you're in welfare. It just depends what you really want. And all this guy wants to do is go for my loot. Could be a decent spec opportunity here. I'm going to have to eat, though, because I'm 44 HP. Go for another bolts. I could have probably AGS mauled him here. Um, he's on 80 HP. I honestly still can. I'm going to go for it. Dead. Oh, he got the freeze. He's going to come in for an AGS spec of his own, and he's dead. No, he's not. Dead. Good fight. He came in. He wanted to risk it for the biscuit. And he paid the price. Welcome to DMM, my friend. Kill, and that is one of the risks that you honestly shouldn't take. I should not be sitting on 33 HP under any circumstances. But I just wanted to get a nice kill for you guys. Risk it for the biscuit. And if we died, it would have made a funny clip. 2.5 mil loot. I'm just playing some of my best kills in the background right now. So you guys can sort of see how I go for different KOs. Obviously, the gear is a lot different. But yeah. I hope you guys have learned something from this video. Like, literally anything. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video. It is the best thing for the video to do well and for my channel to grow. I'm sorry if there were some things that I forgot to cover. If you'd like, you can ask me questions in the comment section down below, and I will try my best to answer. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy and learned something.